it's Haley, and today I'm going to be doing my January wrap-up. So no, that is not a mistake in the title. This is my January wrap-up. I guess time just kind of got away from me, and before I knew it, here we are, halfway through February. I don't even know when this video is going up. But for a couple months now, I've been really in between whether I wanted to do wrap-ups or do, like, periodic things, and initially I had decided I was just going to do periodic things, but now I've just kind of decided I'm just going to do monthly wrap-ups. So that might change, but I'm indecisive. What do you know? But I ended up reading a total of nine books in January, so it was a solid reading month. I've had really mixed ratings on my readings for the year in general so far. I've been giving out a lot of two-star ratings. Three used to be my general and most used, but lately I feel like it's been two, like 2.5. But once again, the first read of the year was a five out of five stars, so at least I started off the year on a high note. Now let's just get into the books that I read. So the first book that I read this year, you guys already know, I gave a five out of five stars, and that is My Plain Jane by the Lady Janies, aka Cynthia Hand, Brody Ashton, and Jody Meadows. This is the companion novel to My Lady Jane, which I read, I don't even know how long ago it came out, but it came in an owl crate, and I knew nothing about it, and I just kind of for some reason took a chance on it, and I ended up loving it. It is one of my favorite books. It's so funny and just amazing. It's so, so good. So of course when I heard they had another book coming out, I needed it, and then I got an arc, which I'm so excited that I have read it, and oh my god, it was everything I could hope for and more. By the way, you don't have to read My Lady Jane before you read this one, but I recommend that you do because it is amazing. I don't know why you wouldn't. But this is a retelling of Jane Eyre featuring ghosts and ghost hunting. It is so weird and quirky, just like My Lady Jane, but so funny, and oh my god, I just love it. I particularly love how they poke fun at Victorian society in this one, and specifically women's status in Victorian society. I love a good novel that does that, and it's, it was just so good. I loved it, and it's coming out on June 26, but I promise it is worth the wait. Next is the other five-star read that I had this month, and I think it's the only other five-star read that I've had so far this year, actually. But it is Forest Born by Shannon Hale. So this is the finale to the Books of Bayern series, which is not set in Bavaria, but I think it's a nod to the inspiration, which is the Brothers Grimm's fairy tales. But this follows Razo's younger sister, Rin, and she was such a sweet character. She is the youngest of many siblings, and I can identify with a lot of her personality traits as the youngest, and she was just such a treat to follow. The series is so amazing. I love the world, love the characters so, so much. I actually listened to the audiobooks for all of them because they're full cast audiobooks, and I highly recommend them. They were so good, and I just want more of this, but I am glad the story ended where it did. It's very bittersweet, but it was amazing. Next, I read Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. This was one where I really wanted to love it, but I just didn't. So this is set in this amazing fantasy world, such a cool landscape to explore alongside these characters, but apart from that and the writing was pretty good, it was just kind of lackluster. I found it really dragged, it took a while to get to the point of the story, and I thought that there was going to be this big plot twist because I remember seeing someone say, oh my god, that plot twist, but I predicted the plot twist, which is something that I don't do often. I'm terrible at predicting plot twists. That's probably part of the reason why I don't like mysteries is because I can't guess what's going on. But I found this read to be pretty predictable, and thus I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars, which isn't bad by any means. It was just kind of average. It was solid, but I didn't love it. It didn't really rise above my expectations, I guess. Next, I listened to the audiobook for The Thousandth Floor by Catherine McGee. I actually started this, like, back in November or something like that, and then I put it down because I think I was picking up holiday reads or something, and then I finally ended up picking it up again in January, and I ended up really enjoying it. I was super surprised with how much I liked it. I'm not generally into sci-fi, but I feel like if I am going to read a sci-fi, this is the kind of sci-fi I go for, with kind of the futuristic elements to it, not something that's set in, like, outer space. This is set in futuristic Manhattan, and it follows this thousand-floor building and all the people who live in it, and if you live on, like, based on what floor you live on, it kind of determines your social class, which I thought was so cool. It honestly is a lot like Gossip Girl, but sci-fi, which a lot of people describe it as, but it really is. The one thing that got me was I didn't realize how invested I was in the characters until the end, and I was super invested in their stories, and no one really has a happy ending, but it really worked for this, so I think I will probably be picking up the sequel. I'm not entirely sure, but probably. So I gave this a four out of five stars. Next is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. This is a children's classic that I have wanted to read for a very long time because I love children's classics, and I have read, I feel like, not most of them, obviously, because there's so many out there, but I've read a fair few. But this one's very different.
different because I don't think I've ever read a children's classic or at least not recently that is about animals but this was so heartwarming and just it had such a like pastoral just easy going I feel like this would be perfect to read on a nice sunny summer's day it was so whimsical and fun and I loved the characters and they were just iconic caricatures and it was honestly just refreshing and very childlike I really liked it so I gave it a four out of five stars also this is the Barnes and Noble classics edition which is very pretty next I read the cruel prince by Holly black which I really really liked but everyone seems to be reading it and like absolutely adoring it I think that might be why I didn't enjoy it as much was because it is so hyped up it's a really cool story dealing with fairy politics and I liked the fact that it had like modern day earth in there I didn't know what else to say modern day life I guess modern day humanity I don't know earth seems like the wrong word but there's like a scene where they go to the mall and they live in this fairy world but it's side by side with a world that is recognizable to me I feel like most times when you have fairies and humans coexisting it's usually kind of like an ancient world that isn't really recognizable to us so it was very cool to have a world that was like our own or my own why am I struggling so much right now the writing was really awesome this is my first book that I've read just by Holly Black I've read the Iron Trial just the first book which she co-wrote with Cassandra Clare and I liked that one but it was cool to read something just by her now you can really tell she knows what she's talking about when it comes to folklore you can tell she's very knowledgeable and that comes across in the fairy politics and how the dynamics of this story work I liked that romance wasn't a main focus of it it really immersed me in the fairy culture and I felt like I was in this fey world which was super cool to navigate so overall I ended up giving it a four out of five stars maybe a 4.5 not too sure after that I read royally lost by Angie Stanton which I ended up giving a one out of five stars this was just too corny for me it's not my taste I think if you really like Hallmark movies and Lifetime movies and stuff like that then you would really like this one but like after 60 pages there's already a kiss and I was like too corn like too too cheesy too much corn it was just not my taste at all I wasn't expecting it to be like mind-blowing because I mean it is about this girl who goes traveling through Europe and then meets a European prince and obviously there was gonna be a romance but I felt like the fact that they were traveling through Europe wasn't really part of it like it didn't really play a key role which was kind of sad I love reading European travel novels so it was kind of like oh and especially because the main character is just like insufferably annoying her and her brother are just like oh my god oh our life is so hard we're traveling through Europe we're not paying for it oh my god I was very annoyed especially as someone who like saved forever and spent so much money traveling through Europe and I worked for it you should enjoy the fact that you get a free ride to Europe I was just mm -mm. she was a spoiled brat and the storyline was just predictable which I mean that was kind of a given given the synopsis but it just was no I didn't like it next I finally read the boy in the striped pajamas by John Boyne this is obviously a novel that is very famous it became a movie which I don't think I'll watch because I think it's gonna be way too intense for me I even I read this like late at night and when I read stuff like this it just freaks me out and I have a really hard time sleeping because it's just so intense but I didn't love this book I think my expectations were really high but a big thing that changed my rating and made it a lot higher is that it literally it's described as a fable which I didn't know but the fact that it's described as a fable I think really explains a lot of the abstractness to it and the ending came out of nowhere was not expecting it but like oh my god but I think as a fable it really functions well as that because its message from my interpretation at least is that these things can happen to anyone and I mean it's in the time of the Holocaust and it's showing you how none of these people are different at their core I hope that makes sense I'm trying to like give you the moral of it without spoiling I feel like most of you have either read this or watched the movie but just in case so it's really interesting and a heartbreaking story and I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5 stars well I didn't love it it is definitely a novel that I will not soon forget finally I read writing fantasy and science fiction which is by a bunch of authors it's kind of like essays by Orson Scott Card Philip Athens and Jay Lake are the main authors and I'm not gonna give a rating for this just because it's more 
of like a reference guide and not everything pertained to me so I didn't read everything. Like there's some stuff in steampunk in here. I mostly was in it for the fantasy stuff but it was really helpful. I will say that I think this is a super helpful reference guide that I will be referring to as I'm writing. I've already finished chapter one now which is exciting. I need to actually go after this and write chapter two but it definitely has lots of helpful information so if you are writing a fantasy then I think this would be a good guide to look into. So those are all the books that I read in January. Please let me know if you have read any of these books, your thoughts on them, or the books that you read in January, if you can remember, because that was a long time ago. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe. I put out new videos every Monday and Thursday. You can also follow me on my social media. I have Twitter. My Twitter is at Hales and Bookland, and I also have Instagram, and my Instagram is at Haley and Bookland, but all that information is down below for you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!